Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Dry docking and shipyards are crucial elements of the maritime industry, providing essential services for the construction, repair, and maintenance of ships. The concept of dry docking, where a ship can be taken out of the water for maintenance and repairs, has ancient origins and has developed throughout the years. Today, shipyards and dry docks are an integral part of the global maritime industry. They range from small, specialized facilities to massive complexes capable of constructing and repairing the largest ships afloat. In the intriguing process of dry docking, a ship's journey takes it from the open sea to the heart of a bustling shipyard. Tugboats and shipyard personnel guide the vessel into a dry dock, where blocks are meticulously arranged to cradle it. Cables and anchor chains are unraveled and inspected, with repairs made as necessary. The vessel's hull undergoes a transformation through high-pressure washing, blasting away rust and meticulous painting, protecting it from the sea's elements. Below the waterline, sea chests are opened, valves are overhauled, and essential maintenance and repairs are carried out. As the dry dock refills with water, the vessel is towed back out to the open sea, ready to embark on new maritime operations with renewed structure and vitality. Repairs and maintenance are critical components of the ship dry dock repair process. By ensuring the vessel's seaworthiness, safety, and operational efficiency, Skilled welders and shipyard personnel address structural issues or damage to the vessel's hull or superstructure. This includes repairing cracks, dents, and other forms of physical damage. Propellers and shafts are carefully examined for signs of wear, corrosion, or damage. Any issues are addressed through welding or grinding, and the propeller is balanced and the shaft aligned for optimal performance. Ship engines undergo comprehensive inspections and maintenance. This includes cleaning, replacement of worn parts, and calibration to ensure they operate efficiently and reliably. Piping systems are inspected and overhauled as necessary to prevent leaks and ensure proper functioning. Electrical systems and equipment are thoroughly checked to ensure safe and reliable operation. Any damaged cables, connectors, or components are replaced. Skilled inspectors conduct a series of tests and checks to verify the quality of repairs and maintenance. Hydroblasting is commonly used in shipyards to clean ship holes, 
remove marine growth, and prepare surfaces for repainting or coating applications. This equipment typically includes a high pressure pump, hoses, nozzles, and safety equipment. The heart of the system is the high pressure pump, which pressurizes water to very high levels. Rust and paint are eliminated by introducing minor abrasive particles into the water and expelling them at a pressure of 10,000 PSI. The level of cleanliness can range from merely stripping the paint to completely eliminating both the paint and the rust, revealing the pristine metal beneath. Hole painting for fouling prevention, often referred to as anti-fouling painting, is a crucial aspect of ship maintenance performed by companies like International. Anti-fouling paint is applied to the cleaned and prepared hole in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications. Such paint contains biocides or other chemical compounds that deter or inhibit the attachment and growth of fouling organisms. Typically, multiple coats of paint are applied to achieve the desired level of protection. The dry docking process for a submarine is a specialized operation. It involves removing a submarine from the water and placing it in a dry dock. This is done in a procedure similar to other vessels, following maintenance, repairs, inspections, and upgrades. Dry docking provides an opportunity to install new technology, equipment, or weapon systems, or to carry out extensive modernization projects. These upgrades may enhance the submarine's capabilities, extend its service life, or improve its operational efficiency. One noteworthy achievement in this regard took place in 2021 when the Trident Refit Facility Bangor successfully completed the undocking of the USS Nevada. This undocking operation adhered precisely to the original availability schedule, underscoring the facility's commitment to timeliness and efficiency. TRFB's dedicated team, consisting of approximately 500 military personnel and 1,500 civilian experts, demonstrated their exceptional capabilities by completing an impressive 1,398 tasks. The encapsulated Harpoon Certification Training Vehicle Testing is a critical phase in the process of certifying a submarine to carry and employ Warshot Tactical Harpoon Missiles. This system is designed to provide naval commanders with a highly effective, all-weather and long-range anti-ship capability allowing submarines to engage and neutralize surface targets with precision and lethality. EHCTV testing aims to assess various aspects like handling and stowage, launch, and communication procedures. Roll and train tube two, stand clear. clear. The torpedo loading and launching process in exercises like RIMPAC 
involves a series of highly coordinated steps to prepare and execute the launch of torpedoes or missiles from submarines. Firstly, the breach door in the torpedo room is opened to load the torpedo into the tube. Power is turned on for the torpedo to warm up, and fire control programs are uploaded. Upon receiving the launch command and ensuring interlocks are satisfied, high pressure water is thrust into the tube, ejecting the torpedo forcefully. The power cable is severed at launch, and the torpedo begins its programmed run. In the domain of submarine design and shipyard facilities, Saab's pioneering approach takes center stage as they embark on the construction of a new generation of air-independent propulsion submarines in the southern region of Sweden. Saab's dedicated team of shipbuilders collaborate closely in cross-functional teams, pooling their expertise and experience from various domains. With their fully digitized workflow, underpinned by model-based definition, Every component and piece of information relevant to the submarine's construction and operation is stored digitally. This facilitates cost-effective maintenance and offers enhanced opportunities for modular design, which enables Saab to work in parallel on pre-equipped platforms ensuring that these platforms are thoroughly tested and ready for installation into the submarine's hull. To achieve the robustness and resilience of their submarines, they subject every component to rigorous testing, undergoing stringent assessments to certify that they meet both the Navy's requirements and Saab's exacting standards. This comprehensive testing covers aspects like withstanding high pressure and extreme shock loading, which submarines can encounter during underwater explosions. Saab's shipyard facilities are a testament to their commitment to excellence. Spanning over 20 acres of indoor floor area, these facilities are equipped to handle all stages of submarine and naval ship construction, from initial design to construction, assembly, setting to work, and testing. Robots, such as those used for grinding, handle the arduous task of processing 24 miles of hull and steel parts per submarine, ensuring precision and consistency in the construction process. Saab's approach to submarine design is characterized by evolution and innovation, embracing evolutionary design and gradually implementing new technologies. Dry docks and shipyards are pivotal in both the manufacturing and maintenance processes of naval vessels. That includes ships and submarines. They serve as the heart of the maritime industry, playing a crucial role in ensuring the readiness, safety, and efficiency of these vessels. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.